As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Can we talk about the Zed Valorant activation? Because I'm really curious what went on there. Because a lot of people have said this is a great in-game item activation to me. And I don't have enough. And I'm actually really curious. Can you explain, Jimmy? I think it might be interesting yeah. to like. Uh... Um, so, yeah, no, Zed, it, it initially started off Zed just uh, like a. I want to say with the release of Overwatch, Zed really came into the scene as someone who was a entertainer and a gamer. Um, you know, those two things were first and foremost for him. So with Overwatch, he was invited to do lots of events. And now with Valorant, it seems like he just doubled down on his passion for FPS titles and played a lot of Valorant. has been streaming it, been tweeting about it all the time, and just been talking about how much fun he's been having with the game. So I think the Valorant team actually, um, you know, we know some of the people directly involved with this deal, actually. Um, Paul, like Samira Beruzan, you know, she was very much... Uh, she was driving. Zed's marketing manager, and then right. now she's at Riot. So. Exactly. And so that progression obviously came with years of connections in the industry, and it just made total sense for these two entities to work together. And so when they thought about what can we do to really create an experience for these players, the noise was obviously the noise of the guns, the, you know, when you get a kill, the music plays, there's so many levels to what you can integrate uniquely as a as as a musician as a musician someone who's completely mastered that scene of audio and so from the bullets being shot in the guns to the way they register and like the little sound waves that you have on the guns themselves there's little details in every single one and apparently there's more easter eggs still to be found um the valorant twitter account is really adamant about that so i wonder what else they're hiding in the actual skin sets themselves like maybe the sound waves mean something or something else who knows but um yeah and it's honestly it the skins look great but apart from that it's also one of their most expensive skin sets ever this whole bundle to buy the entire thing is about 10,700 rp which i think rounds out to 107 bucks yeah um just straight wait. up so 107 bucks for five guns and the experience that comes wait, which is by the way another great time to talk about the power of free to play like like one skew in a free to play game is retailing for two regular games. Oh, 100 like percent. I, I, and right. I think this is not an unusual trend. I've noticed the pricing in lots of free to play games. Basically, mobile always had very high end pricing, but PC and console games tended to resist very high priced item sets. Um, you know, I remember when like DLC would cap out at nine ninety nine, you'd be like, whoa, you know, that's pricey, man. Um, it's, you know, it's really interesting to see how Riot is anchoring to these, you know, luxury. I mean, it's a luxury price point, honestly, like and it's incredible. And I, I, I'll i be curious to see how much this sells, because my sense is the market actively supports these very high engagement, pro these very high cost products. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And you know, something we're going to see over and over again is obviously the reengagement of brands that we've seen already involved with Riot Games IP previously. You know, the thing in mind is obviously Louis, right? Louis Vuitton and their League of Legends skins. It's only a matter of time until we see a Louis Vuitton Valorant line that comes in with $400 worth of skins, but you also get an IRL something, you know, like where you, this is kind of straying away from the topic at hand, but kind of goes hand in hand as well. NFTs have begun, you know, as much as they sell their digital copies of NFTs, they're starting to create physical editions of these pieces of art as well mm. to accompany them. So it's like, I wonder if there's something in, yeah, I know it's weird, right? You go whole, you go full circle. It's like, here's wow. a piece of art. Crypto here's a digital representation. Art. Oh my God. I, I wish, <laughs> right. Like, it's a picture. I, I wish we had buy. the numbers, yeah. uh, the numbers from Riot, because I suspect they've gone after a, it's okay if we sell to only the top 1%. 
right? Because they're paying $107. Like, I, I, I don't but, think... But see, this is the beauty of the free-to-play business model, because when you cast a wide net and you have whatever, let's use a round number, 100 million users, 1% is a million sales. You know, that's... I, I mean, I, it's an obvious point, but it's like, it's the power of free-to-play backend monetization. You get such a wide filter you can do these narrow band products. I mean, there's no way you're getting one percent to buy that. That, you know, like you're, you might be getting the. T but I, your point still stands. It's yeah, yeah. I it's, think it's that their, the numbers yeah, no, are more like you're getting like four to five percent buying anything, and then like literally like five percent of that five percent are the ones buying like the thousand dollar items. Yeah, and it's crazy to think too, because I think like when you think about these high end items, right? This is one of the more expensive skin sets in the game, but you also have to think about like how many of those players are also just naturally fans of Zed who don't even care about the game and are just like, oh wait, wait, that's awesome. That's my favorite artist right now. You know what I mean? So I wonder if that like percentage to Will's point, like you do get that 5% of the 5% where I would fit into as a player, but you also get this huge subset of people that just don't care about the game, but are like Zed, dude, like, you know, the people that yeah, hop Fortnite. I think it'll, these... this is a good way to bring it back to why I think the Roblox promotion is so compelling, right? Is think about the benefit to that. Like we're talking a lot about the benefit to the game itself, and their benefit is obviously get sponsorship dollars, right? But there is another benefit that these collabs bring in incremental users, and I think the pitch is way more appealing in the Roblox example, which is you're into vans, so you probably like skateboarding. Here's a skateboarding game, right? Like it's way more appealing to the incremental user than it would be, say, Fortnite. Hey, you like you like skateboarding, so buy shoes and a shooter. You know what I mean? Like, I think the ability to live closer to the brand also makes the incremental audience more valuable to the parent platform. Does that make sense? Did you guys, did that, did that follow? Yeah, I just think the whole Zed thing is kind of a non-story. To be honest, I didn't even have it in the roster. Like, I didn't even have it in the lineup this week because it's like, it's kind of a ho-hum activation. He's not, he's not A-list, he's kind of like B-list, right? There's bigger DJs in the world than Zed. Come few on, guys very few very few and, okay, and, and if we're talking about someone cre creating original music and scores and like i wouldn't put a dj at the top of that list right let's let's there's the our dj's really musicians kind of whoa whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah the serious, <laughs> the serious. <laughs> but, but it's, it's just like if you're riot right and you're valorant you can get anyone you want right fortnite did a collab with lebron like yeah, let's let's, let's be DJ clear. Marshmallow though, right? like yeah. the Le marshmallow. So LeBron and and Zed aren't at, of the same caliber here. Yeah, but, but LeBron, LeBron's a basketball player. I mean, but the, my point is, just, my point yeah, right. is, they could have had a much larger celebrity if they really wanted to. And I think this this was kind of a head scratcher for me. It's like you picked okay. kind of a middle of the road celebrity, and you're charging one hundred and seven dollars for it. But that that's kind of the appeal to me of this promotion, why I think a lot of people have singled it out. It's like, yeah, when it's an A-lister, like, I, I don't even know who are A-list celebrities now. Matt Damon? Is Matt Damon A-list? Like, if it's, no. you know. Okay, well, <laughs> no. Okay, hey, I don't know. Was. Tom he is, yeah, Matt Damon. Come I'd on. say Matt Damon's kind of A-list yeah. in terms of All if right, you're making he, a movie. He's, Let's in the dog route. he's in the doghouse right now. Okay, yeah. who, who cares? Yeah. Whatever. Name an A-list <laughs> celebrity, right? When they're doing the tie-up with the brand, it's obvious it's a strategic marketing-driven partnership, right? I think part of maybe why some people have reacted very well is that it's like, it does genuinely seem to be Zed really likes this game. And my suspicion is people who make Valorant really like Zed. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, we could have had somebody with 10x the follower count and five more Platinums, but we like each other. Let's just do this thing and let's go wild. Like, I think that might be why this is landing better. Cause I agree. It's sort of a, it was sort of a non news item until it came up here, but it's interesting just how many people have said this is an interesting, well-executed promotion to me. Okay. I want to build on that because I read a story earlier too, about how a Netflix, uh, Netflix executive is moving over to riot. Um, I don't know if you have this pulled up, Paul, kind of like a smaller story as well, but I think this Netflix was a previous week no i don't think this it was but i think it, we never talked about it at least on the live stream okay. so I, it is an interesting one yeah so he's moving over to riot to basically help them develop their um media content strategy and like more video that kind of thing the thing that i like about this that riot is that riot has going for it is i feel like the trend 
most of the time is that game companies are getting into the media world. But in these two partnerships, we see kind of the reverse. Like we see Zed going into the game and creating music rather than the game going out and asking Zed to create. Like, I don't know exactly how I'm trying to say it, but we see a lot of yeah. like game companies go out and try to create content on Netflix rather than like Netflix executives going into game companies and creating content. So I like this kind of reversal of these partnerships and how like entertainment is going into games rather than games reaching out to get to entertainment um, or different, I shouldn't say entertainment, but different forms of media. And that's where I think like this, I think Paul, you're framing for this music thing is like a little off because it's really cool that Riot incorporated this into their game. It's, I don't know that it's necessarily about like Zed's audience, and Zed follow, Zed's followers so much as it is about Riot taking Zed's abilities and, and transforming it into something they can use. And I think that's a really cool thing that they you're, did. You're saying it's special because it was initiated by the artist? Sort of. I, I feel like it's, it's, I like to see the integration happen where the company, where the gaming company isn't the one like having to adjust to like, for example, the music industry, where the music industry is actually adjusting into the gaming company in a really interesting way. Like all right. of, I mean, I see what you I, mean. I, I think that that's a really cool difference in the way that this, like, it's not, you know, Fortnite putting on a concert. That's very standard music industry kind of practice. I get it. I get it. So it's, so it I is think slightly it's cool, different. Yeah. But, and I think that's a good, I think that's a good. But do you not agree? For how entertainment's integrated. It feels like they're underachieving a little <laughs> bit. No, I don't think you know Zed. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Because honestly, I think Josh in the chat brings up a great point too. Like Zed is pretty much one of the premier people in music at this point in time but also say you brought a drake on what sort of crossover i mean like what would you do where's the donda you know like the set what would happen for, you start you know, flying like... away mid-game like what happens no, you know no, what but happens? my point is like that would have made news right we would have talked about that in a big that way made, but in my brain that would have made less sense like my gun says donda every time i shoot it like what what's you know what is the crossover and so i think that the chat brings up a good point in that the communities for both the listeners um of zed and the community of people playing it are younger overall and so they are more exposed to his music and it seems more genuine of an integration rather than a cash grab from Riot Games looking to integrate more music people. And to Lindsay's point, it looks like someone genuinely in music wanting to get into gaming and show the people that, hey, like, we're coming to you where you live instead, um, which well, I think it resonates with the audience. Let me just read some of these comments because you do they do bring up good points. Uh, I will just say that it's unfortunate we'll, we'll never have the data on how this sold. Uh, because that, you know, that would settle the argument. Uh, but Ramsey, I mean, this is my, my feeling. That's a seven month. Wow. Subscription. <laughs> um, uh, wow. It is a lot. Um, Hey Robert, great to have you here. Um, ghost Regan says, Paul, your old head is showing. <laughs> Look, all right. I, I didn't say Zed's not famous. I just said he's not the most famous. And for riot, when you're the biggest game and you're the biggest game company, I don't know. I expect them to get the most famous. Um, Six Cannon says, if you pick someone like Drake who probably never touched Valorant or someone who knows gaming as well as Zed does, what would make more sense? Uh, I, clearly, all of you think it makes more sense, uh, including Ghost Recon, that it makes more sense to have Zed. Six Cannon says, although Zed is a DJ, his music's similar to another artist like Dead Mouse. It's mostly original music. Yeah. I mean, Dead Mouse calls himself a DJ, but he does produce a lot of original music. He's not just mixing other people's music. Um, yeah, well, Paul, right. this is a lot of backlash for you. And he is, this he is, is a game. Like, people are backlash. really up against the profit here. This is the the most, uh, it's like a rebellion. <laughs> this is what I mean. Is this I mean, Zed promotion? I mean, to be fair, really this is a pretty subjective question. So, you Taylor know, says, uh, not really Zaddy right or wrong. Has <laughs> Zaddy, Zaddy. <laughs> Zaddy. Zaddy. <laughs> Zaddy. <laughs> has been around the gaming community forever. Even before Valorant, he was doing all kinds of stuff with Overwatch. Same with Josh. Hutcherson and DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled was not doing anything with Overwatch. Wait, we're just going to forget that ever happened. Please, I, can't, I don't need to see his dance moves ever again. Um, another one here. Um, esports is such a main... You guys didn't catch that, all of you. Um, esports is such a mainstream thing within celebrities and sports 
players, it's becoming so common for them to jump at these games, not the games jump at them. And this is kind of what I mean. Like, you're going to have a lot of, like, B-tier celebrities now, all, like, B-list celebrities going to Valorant be like, hey, I play the game, like, make skins for me. And we're going to get a lot of sort of, not unknown, but B-list celebs uh, doing doing in integrations. I just, I don't know. Uh, Robert says, former Netflix exec Brian Wright is joining Riot as chief content officer. This not only brings new perspective, it also brings an insider connection influencing Netflix gaming. Perhaps more Riot content will come to Netflix as new originals. Oh, 100%. Um, that would be, I, I mean, whoa, that would be stellar. Whoa, 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 whoa. We already what? know that's happening, don't we? No. Uh, have They're they announced? Animated. I'm pretty sure Riot has a new animated series. I'm not sure if it's coming. I know they did. Valorant. You're right. They announced something. Yeah, Arcane, the TV series, independently financed by Riot, and would premiere exclusively on Netflix in the fall of 2021. Yep. Uh, where Zed goes, DK will follow. Donkey Kong? I don't know who DK. DraftKings. DraftKings. Oh. <laughs> um, Taylor says, sorry. We know you meant no, Zaddy. he can yeah. be Zaddy. <laughs> I thought that was like a cool thing people who are big fans of Zed called him, like the affectionate term. You, you should call him that, Will. Yeah, you should. You should, you should From get now an I Heart Zaddy t-shirt. I Heart Zaddy. <laughs> um, Ramsey says, Dead Mouse held an Uno tournament on Twitch the other day, so looks like our, all these artists are trying to get into the space. Ramsey, Dead Mouse has been streaming on Twitch yeah, before yeah. He, he took a hiatus because he got banned a couple of times and he got fed up with Twitch, but he used to stream... PUBG like daily. He used to stream his music making almost daily. Uh, and in fact, his production company, whose name's now escaping me, Mouse something, Mousetrap, Mousetrap, um, he signed, he did a, a, a song, in fact, with another Twitch streamer that he discovered on Twitch. So, like, Dead Mouse has been in the gaming community pretty heavily for, I'd say, the last five years, five, six years, mm. if not more. Um, the, the knowledge of Dead Mass is impressive, Paul. He's Canadian. Oh, really? <laughs> That's why. Of That's course. Why. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All the Canadians in the register, man, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Every Literally. Canadian knows every other Canadian. Telepathically <laughs> connected, like. Um, Six Cannon says, "I won't speak for Overwatch because that one confuses me, but for Fortnite, having LeBron as a cameo makes a little more sense because it's meant to be targeted towards a more casual audience." I will say, just to this point. That if they did a LeBron skin in Valorant, it would still outsell a Zed skin. I don't care what you guys say about Zed's fame. Well, um, a LeBron skin would still outsell a Zed skin, even if it was just a gun skin. But would the experience be as cool? <laughs> right. That's what I mean, as a business, I don't really care. <laughs> right. Um, which, which, you know, as you know, they were in the position to be like, okay, do we do just the money thing or do we still do the money thing because that is no slouch keep in mind but also create an experience to go hand in hand with it and then create this feeling where Lindsay was talking about where it feels genuine may not be genuine at all may just be a business business move but feels so we'll spend more money because we like you more <laughs> now i mean that's what um, i imagine so who's gonna buy the zed uh collab skins here out of the six people here did you not yet i haven't if oh, I could okay. start it, okay. I would. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Gonna for for a hundred bucks, okay. over a hundred bucks. I mean, spent so much money on video games. I think games. it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've spent <laughs> too much money on that game on too many stupid things. You can write oh, that right. off, right? We all we all work in gaming. That's a write off. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Hello, you government. Stop putting your tax evasion on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we'll edit it out. 